Hi, Josh here and you're watching 610 Bob's Teardowns, where we take stuff apart to find out how they work. Today, power steering box. How does hydraulic fluid assist steering? This is a power steering box. This one is out of an F-250 pickup truck. If your vehicle has one, it is probably much smaller, but to my knowledge, they are all pretty much the same. Some cars do use a power steering rack, but that is different from what we're talking about here. This is your input shaft. Your steering wheel turns this shaft. After some internal magic, this output shaft turns. A pitman arm is attached to this, which is then connected to some other links, which turns your wheels. But how exactly does that magic work? Well, let's take it apart to find out. Hmm, that doesn't clear it up much. Hang on. Here we go, that's better. This ball lead screw turns with the steering wheel. As it turns, it screws in or out of the piston. Since the ball lead screw can't move up or down, it pulls the piston up or pushes it down, just like a nut on a bolt. This piston is also a rack and the output shaft is a pinion. As the piston moves up and down, it pushes against the teeth of the output shaft. This causes the output shaft to turn. If you're wondering why it's called a ball lead screw, there are ball bearings inside the piston. So instead of the lead screw using threads to turn against, it uses these ball bearings. This reduces the friction required to rotate the lead screw, increasing the efficiency of the system. This is basically a gearbox. It reduces the input speed while increasing the input torque. But that's just a steering box. This is a powered steering box. So where's the power? Remember I kept on referring to that part as a piston? Well, that's because it is a hydraulic piston. Turn one way, high pressure fluid fills the top of the piston, pushing the piston down. Turn the other way, high pressure fluid fills the bottom of the piston, pushing the piston upward. This positive feedback valve, wait what? Positive feedback valve. This valve monitors the amount of torque applied to the input shaft. It's a positive feedback valve because as the amount of torque applied to the input shaft goes up, the amount of fluid that is allowed to pass through the valve also goes up. So the harder it is to turn the steering wheel, the more fluid that is sent to assist you. But how does this work? Well, the valve works on the exact same principle as this torque wrench. The more torque that is applied to the torque wrench, the more the handle deflects. There are four parts that we will be looking at. The metering rod, which you can see poking out right here. That goes from here to the top of the ball lead screw. We will be also looking at the input shaft, the valve sleeve, and the ball lead screw. The valve sleeve is pinned to the ball lead screw, so it can turn in relation to the lead screw. The input shaft, however, is only tied to the ball lead screw via the metering shaft. Just like the torque wrench, the metering rod has some give to it. As the torque applied to the input shaft goes up, the metering rod deflects more and more. This causes the input shaft to rotate a little in relation to the ball lead screw and the valve sleeve. When I say the input shaft rotates a little, I do mean a little. If the input shaft rotates too much in relation to the ball lead screw, the metering rod could deform or break. So there are built-in stops to prevent this. This is the top of the ball lead screw. You can see the metering rod broken off here. There are flat spots here and here. There are similar flat spots on the input shaft. The input shaft goes into the ball lead screw. There's enough play to allow the input shaft to spin a little, but not enough to permanently deform the metering rod. These stops would be used if your power steering system wasn't working or you max out your power steering system. So here's the valve in pieces. Understand? No? Well, I don't blame you. To the chalkboard! Okay, so here's the lineup. When the other team comes this way, oh wait, wrong chalkboard. Hang on. So here's the valve looking down on it. Disclaimer, nothing here is the scale. This is just a general simplified diagram. This is what the valve looks like when there's no torque applied to the steering wheel. The fluid comes out of the high pressure port, wallows around a bit and exits through the return. When we need a little power, the metering rod allows the input shaft to rotate a little in comparison to the outer sleeve. This starts to direct some of the high pressure fluid to one side of the piston. It also directs some of the fluid from the other side of the piston to the return line, where it ends up back into your power steering reservoir. This happens on all four sides of the valve. When we need all power, you yell down to the engine room, Scotty, we need more power. Then you hear back, 
I'm getting it all she's got, Captain. She can't take much more of this. Yeah, that was a terrible, terrible accent. Yeah, no. When the torque on the steering wheel is so great that the input shaft's limiters engage, you need as much power steering as your car can muster. When this happens, this part of the valve practically closes off, directing all high pressure fluid to one side of the piston, and it directs all fluid from the other side of the piston to the return line. Oh, then you hear from the valve, I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. Moving on, the same is true when you turn the other way. Fluid is just directed to the opposite side of the piston. And when you don't need power steering anymore, either because nothing is fighting the wheels or you're done your turn, the torque on the steering wheel is zero. The valve then returns to center. This allows the fluid to wallow around without a care in the world. Basically, as torque on the input shaft goes up, this gap closes, directing fluid to one side of the piston. Here are the fluid paths coming out of the valve sleeve. You have the top of the piston, high pressure, bottom of the piston, and the return comes out of the input shaft through these holes. The valve housing helps direct fluid to the power steering box through these holes. There are slots in the housing to help direct fluid and to help keep fluid velocity low by giving the fluid more room. The high pressure and return ports goes directly to the ports on the outside of the housing. This is where you connect your power steering hoses to the power steering box. Fluid goes to and from the valve body and the piston through these ports. One goes directly onto the top of the power steering box. The other port goes into this passageway where it goes down to the bottom of the power steering box and exits here at the bottom of the piston. And that is how a power steering box works. Just a torque metering valve controlling a hydraulic piston slash nut slash rack moving up and down to rotate a pinion. Simple. Yikes. Yeah, you may want to rewatch this video a couple times. I did read a couple websites explaining how the valve worked. So I'll include links in the description and a couple cards in the video to these websites. This was all in prep for my next video, DIY Hydro Assist. Even though you only needed to know like 10% of what I just said. Anyway, be sure to check out that video when it comes out. Also, if you have any questions, let me know down below. Also, if you want to yell at me about my uh, really bad Star Trek voices, go ahead. Before you go, I do have to admit, there is one thing that I do not understand. What this thing is for. It is basically a spring pushing two pins into the input shaft. For what? I have no idea. I would say it's a bearing or a stabilizer, but there are only two pins. Got any ideas? Let me know in the comments. But this is what my knuckle looked like after pre-baking. It is more rusted than when I first got it. I even tried pre-baking without cleaning it with distilled water. Still rusted. After a lot of trial and error, I ended up doing this.